some of the time, actually most of the time, the cheaper shops will cost more money. Let's get started. This is a 1995 Ford F-150. It's actually owned by the guy who owns the blue 74 Porsche 911 you guys just saw just recently. Very nice customer, very pleasant to do business with. He dropped this off when he actually when he picked up his Porsche 911 and said, I've had this to a different shop. I was running out of time and I decided to just give them a shot. And things went south so fast. We're going to talk about that today. We're going to look around the truck, but the story behind what we found is actually makes me sad for the mechanic shops of America. It's, is it really getting this bad? It's really crazy. Before we dive in, let's take a look around this really nice truck. So here's the front of this 95 F-150. I actually had a 94 years ago when I first got out of the Army. They're very tough trucks. They're actually a very good truck. I like them. This one's in fair shape. This customer's had it for a long, long time. It's, old, it's his old trusty go-to. He has some other fancy cars, but when he's just driving around going to and from work or here or there, he takes his F-150. Has some nice Goodyear Wranglers on it. Looks like they got some good strong tread. Our FJ Cruiser that we just bought has the B-I-T-C-H word carved in it. I guess this guy got an X carved in his from somebody. I'm not sure what happened there. Pretty nice down this side. So many of these are all rusted right in here, and this one's not. It's actually in pretty decent shape. We'll go around to the back and see it has a topper. Looks like maybe a Vision brand topper. Bumper's in good shape. We'll go around to the front corner and show you a little bit of damage. There's actually some here. A little dent. And there's some more on the front right. Customer was nice and let some friends borrow his truck, and this is how they returned it. Said, thank you for letting us borrow it. This is our uh, way of saying thank you. So that's kind of a bummer there. Kind of sucks. And that's kind of the curse of owning a truck. You're always borrowing it out to people. Can I borrow your truck? I need to tow this. I need to haul the washing machine, this or that. And sometimes that happens. Let's go ahead and jump under the hood. What I'm about to show to you under this hood is one of the, if not the, most reliable engine in all of existence, all of automotive history. Period. It is our 4.9 liter 300 inline six Ford engine. In all caps, I will describe to you that this engine is bulletproof in all caps. You cannot buy a more bulletproof engine than this. It's been around for a long time. They've had them since oh 60s or 70s. I don't know the exact date when they came out with them. But ever since their debut all the way till now here in 1995 on this truck, these engines have been used all over in farming, construction, all kinds of different jobs. And there was a time where people had work trucks, they would specifically say, I do not want the V8, I want the 300 inline six. And as expected, it runs perfectly. We do not need to do any work to the engine. It does have a small coolant leak. The customer has smelled a little bit of antifreeze coming into the cabin. It was one of the issues he brought it to this other shop to, and they couldn't even find it. And we found it here. You can see the lower radiator hose is starting to seep through the hose. And when it gets nice and warmed up and hot, it creates kind of an antifreeze or a coolant smell vapor. And it's getting inhaled into these vents up here. With any oil burning or coolant smell, anything in an engine bay, it's going to go and waft through into your HVAC through those vents on any vehicle, really. How do they miss that? I, I don't know. I really don't know. I got more to talk about that here in a minute. But before we dive into that, let's check out the interior. We're going to kind of skip over the underneath today. We're going to talk about some of the crazy things we found here. Uh, okay, ladies and um, gents, obviously you can tell we're missing a few items. So I can't tell you how many miles are on it. I can't tell you how great the gauge cluster looks or doesn't look. Um, I can only see the switch between the front and the rear uh, fuel tank and a whole bunch of 
connectors. That's it. But let's go ahead and look up here. Hey, this is looking really nice. I don't see anything cracked. I don't see any crevices. It's in really, really good shape. Classic Ford design of the, oh, they had this in the mid 80s all the way through the mid 90s here. Very simple controls. We've gone to dials instead of sliders and a very simple stereo that has not been updated. And I guess he can add a Bluetooth cassette tape if he would like to you know, modernize that system. And it's pretty easy to do. Move down, see that we do have a four speed manual with overdrive. So it would make it nice if you are towing, you can just drop it out of that overdrive to save that transmission. As we move to our seat section, you'll see that it's just one long bench seat. And this is an amazing shape. I don't really see very many flaws on here. If you, if you see a few dust particles, a few little pieces of just stuff that, you know, it's not, it's not loose. It just needs to get vacuumed up. That is it. This thing is in perfect shape. I would love to know what the mileage is on this. But again, we don't know. Door card's looking fabulous. Hard plastic from the 90s. You would think that'd be broke up a little bit more than that. But no. Oh, but look there, there is something we hardly ever see on our cars. Look there, ladies and gentlemen, that is a window knob. It does not have electric windows on here. So those of you that have young children that have never seen a window knob, you can tell them what that is and instruct them how to use it. As we move to the back, you'll see that he does have a window shade to keep that dash from getting those cracks in there and a split in the back that allows, you know, a little bit of airflow through the cabin. One thing that I do see missing is the plastic bevel right here. And obviously that's probably gone out over time because those little bulbs get awfully hot, especially before we went LED. So I can see that breaking, cracking and disappearing. But otherwise the headliner's in really amazing shape. Um, there's another item missing. And well, I guess I can hold this up in place. There we go. There's our rear view mirror. That has come off. But again, that's not that terribly hard. A little bit of glue and it's back in business. As we end at that steering wheel, you can see that we do have a few controls on there, which is kind of nice for being that this is mid nineties. Not like what we have today, but it's at least a start. Love the ever so small horn buttons. I guess that controls anger. So you have to be very purposeful. If you're hitting that horn, you can't just go bam in the center. Nonetheless, okay, well, let's go figure out what's going on with this gauge cluster. So now let's kind of dive into the story. What exactly happened here? The customer had issue with the AC not blowing very cold and also the antifreeze smell. That's it. I'm not going to obviously mention the name of the shop because even though there would be no real case there, I still would have to spend the next six to eight months in and out of court, leaving the shop, skipping videos, all kind of things, having to fight. And I, it's just not worth it, guys. You know they would probably try to sue. So I'm not going to reveal their name. But I do know this shop, I've heard of the name of this shop as people would go here as getting a better deal or a cheaper price. That's not why this customer went there, they just, it was easier, it was there, saving time, they were in a rush. And fully regret that decision now. Between a coolant smell and the AC not blowing cold, he received his truck back with a $900 bill and damage to his vehicle. Things are broken on here. More problems exist than when he brought it there and he paid them $900 for that. So thank you, shop. I'm not gonna say the name. You saw that the dash is all apart. After he received this vehicle back, one of the concerns was is that his speedometer and also the odometer were dead. Let's take a look at that real quick. Here we have the instrument cluster. All the other gauges and everything work, but whatever they were doing, they had this stuff apart. There's all these little traces and things back here. And I'm not sure what they were testing or what they were doing. There's also a plug that goes here to the speedometer. But after they were done doing whatever testing they were doing, this was dead. This wasn't dead when he brought it to them. When he received it back, it was dead. We have tested it and confirmed that something was short-circuited and ruined the cluster. The customer will need a good used cluster to solve this issue. We'll see what they want to do. 
Obviously the customer is not interested in taking the truck back to them to make it right because it probably will come back even worse again. And it's a cheap enough, I mean it's an expensive bill, but it's cheap enough, it's like, I don't even want to talk to those people anymore. That's kind of where this customer is at. I don't even want to talk or even hear their voice anymore. It pisses me off so bad. So here we are. Daniel's son was taking this apart. You have to get this shell off to get to the cluster, and it's just floppy. That's one of the things the customer complained about. It's like, when I got my truck back, the, the, the bezel that goes around the cluster was just floppy. I don't know what happened there. Well, now we know what happened. Let me show you. So on these bezels, you have to take this gray area. You have to pull it out just like this. And it has little clips. And then you can get to a screw here. And then there will be a screw here. I'll demonstrate. Just very lightly pry with my screwdriver. It doesn't take much. And there would be another screw there. But you can see it's completely busted out. These are cracked because they were prying so hard on it. They even cracked it here, prying on it so hard. Guys, they pried on it so hard, they just ripped the screw mounting point here on this plastic. Completely broke this thing to pieces. But wait, there's more. Let's flip it over. There's supposed to be little tabs here kind of connect to some areas on the cluster as well. They just snap those off. This mounting point here for the headlights switch is just snapped and broken. You can see the carnage here where they just pried this and busted the whole thing out. And same thing over here. There you can see the back side as well. There's some more braking here. This is supposed to be a mounting point for the top part of the dash. Who did they have removing this? An elephant? A cave person? Hey, wizard, don't be throwing cave people under the bus. That's true. Some of them are pretty cool. But it's as if they got a pry bar for doing drywall on a house or something and just, just you know, strength like He-Man and just, just broke the thing off and said, yeah, there we go. We got it off. That type of person should not be working on a car. It shouldn't be working on a Hyundai, a Ford, and definitely not an exotic car. They will just break it to smithereens. Let's go inside the interior again and show you some of the remnants of the damage here. So there's these little pieces here. They're supposed to have a screw. You can see they just snap the plastic off. It should come out like that. Why in the world did they snap? You can see the remnant of the plastic in there. They just brutalize the thing. And this one here, you can see the craggy black plastic that's around this screw. That's actually left over from the bezel. They ripped it off so hard. Same across the top there. There's the little remnants of the pieces of the bezel. And as we get down below, there is also a remaining screw with leftover pieces of the bezel there as well. So we heard the original complaints. AC, not blowing cold and a smell from antifreeze. Me as a shop owner, I would be screaming, why are we taking the instrument cluster out? What the hell is going on here? I would be screaming at my mechanic. What are you doing? And you just broke it. First of all, we didn't have to take the cluster out. Second of all, now it's broken, thank you. So with the AC, the customer did get it back. They did recharge the AC, but he noticed that max and normal, there was no difference. And let me show you what I found there. Here we have a vacuum servo. This operates the recirculate door. You can hear the door moving in there. This rusty colored arm was disconnected from this and just laying over here. Okay, go ahead and pick your jaw up. I know your jaw is hitting the ground right now. It's like, what? Why is that disconnected? Or what the, I don't understand what's going on there. So he would select max AC. The little arm would move, but obviously it made no change in the cabin because it's not physically even connected to the arm that connects to the door, the recirculate door. So we connected that back up and magically Max AC works again. 
That wasn't a problem when he first brought this truck to that shop. So he paid $900 for two problems and came back with five problems more that weren't there before and still has coolant smell coming into his cabin. This is insane, guys. This is sad. The final thing we're going to do here is connect our AC machine, or as Tyler from Hoovy's Garage calls it, Angry R2-D2. It kind of looks like that. And verify the weights, because based on the work I'm seeing here, I don't trust that they even put the right amount of refrigerant in. So we're going to verify that and make sure that's good. We've got to just recirculate working. We'll take care of the radiator hoses, and that will take care of the smell. I'll look at getting a good use bezel and maybe a good use cluster. I won't use the F word on, but I will unscrew their screw ups for them. So we'll have the $900 he already spent plus whatever he's going to have spent here to get his truck where it should have been in the first place. So I understand the customer was in a hurry. I totally get that he just wanted a quick fix and get it back on the road. It should not have been a big deal. It shouldn't have. If he would have brought it here, we likely could have fixed it for under $500, and he would have left with two problems solved, no other problems other than that. That's the way we operate here at Omega Auto Clinic. This is not a Maserati. It is not a Bentley Continental or a Porsche 911. Any competent mechanic in Kansas should be able to work on a 1995 Ford F-150 without breaking it into pieces. That's really sad. But it's not a surprise because I've heard about this shop before, like I've mentioned. People say, I did some price shopping, which price shopping can get you into trouble. That's not what the customer did here. But I have heard about this shop before. People price shopping, they get three different estimates. They go with the cheapest one at this shop, not my shop. And they get very poor results out of it. You want to get a good price, you want to get a fair price for what you're getting done. But the cheapest bottom of the barrel price is not always the answer. Most school districts or big businesses or even NASA, when they get estimates, they get three estimates for a, a contractor and they usually go with the middle one. No, they don't. They My don't? school district always went with the cheapest, cheapest place and the step broke. It was horrible. Oh, there you go. They got this, the cheap results. Cheap price, cheap results. So some of us have gone online to order from that magical website called Wish. Did we get what we paid for? No. Did this customer get what he paid for? No. He got even more damage than what was originally there. So the whole point of the video, I know you guys are saying, oh, here we are harping about other shops' crap work. Why are we keep going this? Why do we keep bringing this up? Because it keeps happening over and over and over again. In a year's span time, we probably go through a few thousand, maybe 5,000 cars in this shop. At least 500 or more of them is this situation. I took it to this guy. He broke the hell out of my car. Can you please fix it? So when I get phone calls now, hey, I got a guy that can do it cheaper than you. I say, that's fine, you're welcome to go there, but do not bring me your vehicle when this happens. No my for Newton. Thank you. We know that your car's loud. Thank you. This is more of a learning experience for you guys. I don't want you to have to go through this. This is why this video exists. Some of us are not gearheads. We're not mechanical wizards. We just, some of us are artists, some of us are const like home construction. You don't know much about cars. It's not your forte. Well, that's what I'm here to do. It is my forte, and I will give you that information that you need to help you save money. So I'll go get all these parts ordered. We'll get this solved. The customer will be happy, just like he is every time else he leaves here. If you're curious what kind of tools Danielson used to find the carnage and the tools he's going to use to fix the carnage, Check my Amazon affiliate link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because I'm sure as we get further into 2023, I'll have even more crazy stories for you guys. Thanks for watching.